Welcome to the Acid Trash Jamboree, the virtual home of weird and wild music and cinema. As you may have already guessed, uh, today we'll be taking a look at two Italian films that fall into the giant monster and natural horror subgenres, uh, which were all a rage in the 70s and the 80s and are still being churned out at an alarming rate to this day. It's not what I normally do, uh, but I should point out that in order to talk about the uh, sequel to Kill a Crocodile, I'll need to reveal a couple of uh, spoilers along the way. I mean, these aren't exactly uh, loaded with plot twists and red herrings or anything. Uh, if you've seen more than one of these types of films, then you pretty much know what you're getting uh, from start to finish. Uh, but still, if you're at all intrigued by this pair and don't want anything ruined, then uh, don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so the version I'm showing in this video is the Severin Limited Blu-ray Double Bill uh, with a slipcase. Uh, apparently the standard issue just has the first film and lacks the slipcase, uh, which as you'll see is festooned with some rather eye-catching artwork. So in the first Kill a Crocodile, uh, corruption is rife on the tropical Three Mile Island with the powers that be turning a blind eye to shady sorts, uh, dumping barrels full of radioactive waste into its network of swamps. One day, a troop of ecologists drop by to run some tests on the island's water and soon find out that said gunk has had a strange effect on one of the swamp's inhabitants, uh, namely a vicious crocodile that's grown to monstrous proportions. With the toxic croc starting to chow down on ecologists and islanders alike, it's down to a skilled hunter named Joe to stop the ravenous beast in its tracks. So yeah, like it even needs saying, but this film is a massive rip-off effort, uh, smooshing up bits of hit films like Jaws and Alligator to the point where you can barely tell uh, which one it wants to be more. The titular beast itself is amazingly hokey, uh, drifting along as slowly as a 30-foot-long turd, frankly, uh, but somehow it always manages to catch and chomp its prey in spite, uh, leading to some passably gory moments. Uh, structurally, uh, you know what you're getting into here before you've uh, even hit play, so don't be surprised if you start to nod off in between the death scenes. Still, there's enough going on overall to pass muster if you're in a natural horror frame of mind. On to Kill a Crocodile 2, and what do you know, but... Before it was uh, blown to smithereens, the ginormo croc from the first movie uh, managed to lay some eggs, uh, one of which has hatched out a new reptilian nightmare for the unsuspecting folk of Three Mile Island. At the same time, an all-round dodgy fella by the name of Baxter is planning to build a swanky holiday resort there, though he's also trying to cover up the fact that radioactive waste is still being illegally dumped in the swamps. A feisty American reporter named Lisa Post is dispatched to the island to expose these toxic goings-on, though before she can get the dirt on Baxter and his cronies, unfortunately she's waylaid by the monster. Thankfully then, uh, Kevin, the eco-warrior turned croc killer from the first movie, arrives on the island uh, just in the nick of time. He's supposed to be uh, meeting with Lisa to assist her with her story, uh, but when he finds the splintered remains of her boat, he knows she's in trouble. So yeah, it's time for Kevin to catch up with Joe again to try and save the day. Now, uh, this sequel is apparently made back to back with the first one, so it's more of the same, basically. Quite literally in some respects, i.e. the creature model and Ritz Ortolani's musical score are both reused. There's also quite a bit of flashback filler here too, and worst of all, the croc explosion finale is repeated shot for shot. I mean, I get it, if they only had the uh, one monster model to use between the two films that they could uh, only blow the thing up once, but couldn't they have at least filmed the explosion from a couple of different angles for use in the follow-up? Oh well, at least the uh, attack sequences are a little bit more creative here. 
I especially like the bit where the beast smashes through a flimsy wooden shack and starts munching on its sweaty, swarthy inhabitants. Deborah Carr, who plays Lisa, also shows a bit of skin at times, which is something that the original movie lacks. So yeah, these two are probably about on a par in terms of overall entertainment value, though if you're tight for time or if you missed out on the limited edition double pack version, then the, the first one will no doubt give you enough of a killer croc fix for you to walk away satisfied. Uh, that said, you do get an excellent uh, feature-length documentary as a surprise bonus on the limited edition. The Prince of Plasma, the Gianetto De Rossi story, uh, about the legendary makeup and effects artist. De Rossi was, of course, an occasional director too, and not only did he build the awesome uh, killer crocodile model itself, but he was also responsible for directing the sequel. So that wraps up another video, but don't worry, uh, there's plenty more discussion about this uh, kind of stuff in the pipeline, so please hit subscribe if you want to be kept up to date on all of that. Thank you as ever for watching, and I'll see you again soon on the Acid Trash Jamboree.